<laughs> Our final and surprise speaker is a UN messenger of peace, but her real calling is to be a messenger for all creatures, big and small, who don't have a voice. For those of you who think you work hard, consider that Dr. Goodall travels 300 days a year to talk to people of all ages, all nationalities, and all walks of life to encourage them to realize that we all share this one home. It is my great honor and privilege to introduce Dr. Jane Goodall.
so many people in the developed world have lost the wisdom of the indigenous people, where you make a decision only after considering how will this decision affect our people generations ahead. We're saying, how will it affect me now, or the next shareholders meeting? That's what we're doing now. There's a disconnect between this clever brain and the human heart. And I truly believe we will only <coughs> achieve our true human potential when head and heart work in harmony. So, as we gather here, COP21, we hope that our political leaders are going to come to a wise decision that there will be some kind of agreement made, a binding agreement, a legal agreement to, to curb carbon emissions, to protect the forests and the oceans. But whatever is agreed on paper here will be absolutely no use unless it's implemented afterwards. So what is causing the destruction of the forest? On the one hand, it's abject poverty and you cut the trees down because you're desperate to grow food to feed your family. On the other hand, it's the unsustainable lifestyles of so many of us who have more than we need. Mahatma <laughs> Gandhi who said, the planet can provide for human need, but not human greed. And I personally feel that the, the biggest evil that we have to overcome if we want to save the planet, if we care about our children, grandchildren and theirs, we have to fight corruption. <laughs> it is it's perfectly true that people have begun to understand the need to protect the forest, the fact that we depend on the forest for our future. But as long as we have corrupt politicians who will take money from, people, from big corporations that want to buy a concession in a protected area. As long as that situation continues, then we can't protect the forest, so we have to stop the corruption. And we can blame the politicians, we can blame the corporations, but you know, we also have to blame ourselves. Because the politicians are not going to take the tough stand that must be taken if we've got to fight corruption to save the planet for the future. Unless there's a sufficient number of the general public behind them to support them when they make those tough decisions. And corporations will continue to destroy the planet unless we, the people, refuse to buy products that are made by destroying the planet. We need to have a new way of thinking, a new way of how we treat the planet, a new way of respecting other life forms, and I'm including the plant people. The indigenous people get it right they talk about the animals and the plants as their brothers and sisters. They understand that we are all part of one great ecosystem. We depend on each other. We destroy the environment, the forests, the oceans, the, the um, savannas, whatever, at our own future peril. And so I think coming here for me tonight and hearing about the amazing projects of the indigenous people. This gives me huge hope because we have to get back to the old way of thinking. It's not a new way, it's an old way, it's a wise way. It's the wisdom of the indigenous people respecting Mother Earth and knowing that without Mother Earth, our own future is in jeopardy. And so I'm so honored and I repeat, to be here to just say how very much I and all of us respect the indigenous people, their courage, their wisdom, and the fact that sometimes through huge persecution they have clung 
to those to that way of thinking that is the best way of thinking, the way we all have to turn to. We all must make decisions based on how will these decisions affect future generations and stop thinking of money as a god. Thank you.